We are busy with question three from the RT Practical Paper 1 from the ESA Cape September 2013 matric trial exams. We're busy with a string grid that uses a 2D array and it's basically a whole bunch of ticket numbers and stuff like that. We've done 3.1 to 3.3, we're now going to do 3.4. Basically, these ticket these aren't actual numbers of tickets, these are actually the ticket numbers. So that's ticket number 1, that's ticket number 65. And we want to generate 10 random numbers from 1 to 230 and display those 10 random numbers over there. But we, it, it would be too easy if it was just that easy, obviously. Um, there is a little loophole here. And the loop, or loophole here is that we must only display tickets that have been that have been represented here by a ticket number. So, for example, if I if I get a random number of 120, then I know that that's a valid ticket that has been sold because there it is. It's in that list. If the number that we randomly generate is not in this list, then we can't display it. So, there's actually two parts to this question. The one first part is we need to generate a random number and check if it exists in this uh, 2D array. That's the first part. And then once I've got that skeleton done, then I can do the part around it that will do that part 10 times. So there we get 10 numbers. So let's have a look. Let's go to our code. There's the lucky draws number. So again, we're going to have some sort of loop in. So we'll have our variables, so our row and our call. And we're obviously going to have to have some random number. So I'm going to call it our ticket. That's going to be my ticket number. And they're going to all be of type integer. So let's have a look. Let's go. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my art ticket to a random number. My art ticket, sorry. And that's going to be a random number, which we can use the random range function from 1 to 230. There we go. So that's quite easy. Okay. And then we're going to now go through this array. So we're going to go for r equals 1 to 23. I don't know why I say r. It's not r. It's r row goes from 1 to 23 do and then we're going to go from our call from 1 to 10 for those of you who don't know what I, where I get those numbers from that's what the details of the array that's the range of the array from 1 to 23 and then from 1 to 10 do so what am I going to do I'm going to check so if the now I could check in the string grid or I could check in the array the array is probably the better way to go because the string grid will I'll have to deal with 0 to 22 because of the way it stores things I'm just going to check if this array now the first value is the R row because that's the, the number from 1 to 23 and the second number is the number from 1 to 10 if that is equal to my R ticket so the value in the string grid at, or the, in the array is equal to our ticket, then that number exists. Then I need to do something. Or the, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what? Well, the list box, that's a list box if I think, if I can remember. Let's have a look. Let's go to our program over there. List box 1. There we go. So list box 1 dot items dot add. And we're going to add this R ticket. But our ticket is what? An integer. And so and list boxes take strings. So I must convert from an int to a string. So basically, it's going to go through all of it and check that it exists. I could technically add a break here. Um, basically, what that does is it stops the loop. So it will stop going through that loop. So it just makes it more efficient. doesn't really make a difference. If you were dealing with millions of lines or billions of tickets, then it might be a good idea to make it a bit more efficient. So we generate a random ticket. We go through each and every value in the array, and we check if it's the same as the ticket. The moment it is, we can display that ticket in the list. So let's have a run and see if it works. Get the info, display, lucky draw. So number one does exist there is if I display lucky draw again there is a new number so I think there should be an 8 there I'm not going to actually spend time going through it trying to find an 8 oh there it is um, if I press it again ah oh, nothing happened that time so obviously that time it generated a random number which does not exist um, in this 2d array there's no number with the number that was generated okay so we've done the first part where we generate random numbers now we need to do this 10 times so first of all, I'm going to, when I start this, I actually need to set this list box to clear. So it's just, just nice as a blank, clean slate. And I'm going to repeat doing this 10 times. Okay, so repeat doing all of this. 
until but until what until what what how do we know when we must stop doing this well basically every time I find a number I should basically count that number because if I find one number that's the first number and the second time I generate a RAM number and I have to display it that means I've displayed a second number so I must keep on doing this until I found all 10 numbers so basically I'm gonna basically have a our draws which will count how many draws we have doesn't make a difference but I'm just gonna write it like that anyway and before the loop actually starts I'm gonna set our draws to zero because we do not have any numbers as of yet the moment we find a number and we display it in the list box we have found a number I'm gonna say you know what increase that our draws because we have found a number and I must repeat doing this until I found all 10 numbers so our draws must equal to 10 that's when I must stop and hopefully it's that easy let's run it get information display lucky draws there we go we got 10 numbers if I click on it again it should generate 10 different random numbers there we go and if we double check those numbers should exist in this um, list of numbers somewhere so there we go they don't mention anything about the numbers being unique um, and if you look at the memo they don't do any checking with regarding the numbers being unique so if a number gets drawn twice that uh, must you display it twice in this case it's okay but if they did ask that then all I would do to it instead of when I get to this part over here I would do another check where I do a f uh, some sort of loop that goes through the list box and checks to see if the number that we have ge randomly generated is already in the list box or not if it's not in the list box then we can display it and blah 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 if it's not then we mustn't display it and we mustn't increase our draw so we'll generate a whole new random number and so on so there we go that question seems to be done so that's lucky draws let's move on to number 3.5 calculate which child sold the most tickets and display the child's name using a show message so basically that's one ticket that's two that's three that's four that's five that's six that's seven that's eight so I've got to count that they're eight now I've got to see which which of these students get more than eight now I can probably guess that one dealer is probably gonna win this so that's my guess because I think she's got the most and we can just it's quite easy to check if I just run it and display it that's the nice thing uh, one dealer goes right to the end yeah no one beats one dealer so we know that one dealer is the answer so how do we do this okay well first of all we need to go through each row and count how many tickets were sold so count how many numbers are not equal to zero so let's do that so again it's like repetition here we, we want to make another R row and another R call but we're also going to have some sort of count so let's call it ticket count okay well, I think I had a ticket count so let's call it T count there we go and those are type integer and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go for R row equals 1 to 23 do this this is very repetitive we keep to be doing the same thing every time and you see if you do this every time you actually get easy marks so this is what you do every time you've got 2d in rows okay so what I'm going to do is I need to say if the value now we must be careful I'm going to be doing this so our row from 1 to 23 I need to do for each row I need to do this so I not only there's a, there's a little tricky part of it when I do R row equal to 1, so that's the first row. Now I'm going to go through each and every one of these columns. I need to start off with R count here, or the ticket count, being a 0. Because I need it to be 0 for each time I start a new row. Because I want to count how many tickets they do. I don't want the number of tickets to carry on over here. I'm going to start from fresh from the next row. So that's why this is slightly more different. So that's why I take that begin and I should probably have an end over here and it's a good idea to write some sort of comment end of for loop okay so t count equals zero so now for that one to ten do what must i do if r is an r two tickets and it's r row and r call if that value is greater than zero then we know that it's actually a ticket then just increase ticket count so that's basically gonna increase that's gonna tell me so once this loop has f or once it's finished doing that 
that loop it will then tell me how many tickets that person sold so once this for loops finished there that for that one row will tell me how many tickets there now we just add the max issue of it we're trying to find the maximum amount of tickets so I'm gonna make a T max which is my number of tickets the maximum number of tickets sold and I'm gonna assume from the very beginning that there were no tickets sold or you, or you initialize it to a very small number if you've got a max problem you initialize your max variable to a very high, small number if it's a min problem you initialize to a very high number because then at least something will beat it so the first row will be 8 so 8 will definitely beat 0 so 8 will become the new max so once I've finished this for loop for the I call for just this row see we're still in the loop for the rows because we're going to do this for each and every row but for each and every column once I've finished working out how many um, values are in that column, I'm going to say, well, if that ticket count is greater than my T max, which means there's more tickets than the T max, then I need to actually do two things. I need to not only record a new T max so that I can see if anything else beats it. So T max is now equal to T count. So the first time it does it, T max will be 8. So then it will see to see if anyone else has sold more than 8. But not only do I need to res record who got the most, but I need to record who did it. And I'm going to record the position that we're at in the row. So I'm going to make, um, let's call it T person. T person. And I'm going to record who this person is. Now, I don't need to record their name because their name is in an array called array names. And the position that we're at will be where they are. So, for example, if it's number one, it'll be the number one person. If it's position three, it'll be the third person. So, T person will equal to the row that we are currently dealing with. So, because each row represents one person. And once we've done that and the row has gone through everything and we've finished the loop and we've done everything then we can start we should have in t person we should have the the position in the array of the name of the person that has the highest so in other words if i look at the top here this array so if it's number four is the high is the, the one with the most uh, tickets sold then we will look at the fourth name and display that fourth name from array names so let's go and see if that will work out. So we're going to show message here. And we must show what, what is the message we must show. The name of the person sold the most tickets. So I'm just going to say sold the most tickets. And then in front of that, I'm going to put the name of the person. Now the name comes from array names. And what position? Well, that's the position that we stored in T person. See, not only are we just sto storing what the max amount is, but we're also storing the position of that max amount so we can record who that person is. So hopefully that works. Let's have a look. No errors. Let's get information. Let's display. Most sold. One dealer sold the most tickets. And there we go. Seems to have worked. So just remember, I first counted all the tickets in in each individual row that's why I broke up my for loop there with the begin because for each row I need to set count to a zero and count how many tickets there were once I've finalized how many tickets there were once I finished going through that loop for that column then I went and checked to see, and compared it with the max value that I had if it's the same if it was greater than the max value well then I've got a new max value so I set T max to whatever T count is that number of tickets but I also recorded the row because the row tells me what which person it was and I can get that person's name by the array names uh, array and using the T person as the position please feel free to go to our channel and subscribe to videos like them comment give us some feedback and hopefully they will be of use for you while you are studying for RT or for CAT